A local labor leader challenging a report by the IMF. The family of a missing U.S. couple appeal for help. And more opportunities in the field of technical education to be unveiled. The Bahamas Tonight Northern Edition starts now. This is the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition. Good evening, all. I'm Shashina Roll. As always, it is so great to have you with us. Topping news this evening, a report recently issued by the International Monetary Fund urging the Bahamas government to slash civil service wage bill by millions of dollars is not sitting well with some trade union leaders. Tonight, we hear from an executive of the Bahamas Union of Teachers on mounting concerns regarding this recommendation. Sabrina Brown reports. Make no sense. Area Vice President of the Bahamas Union of Teachers, Quinton LaRota, represents over 600 teachers who are part of the public service on Grand Bahama. He says the recommendation by the IMF to the government to cut public sector wages by some $70 million is troubling. I don't think that um, the government should, should participate in, in causing um, more jobs to, to, to be lost. By, by taking that kind of advice from the IMF, not especially with substantive PNP um, um, employment. I understand that you may have some contracts that you're not going to renew um, if you make the argument that some of those contracts may have been given in the first place. I think that's feasible and people get that. But the IMF looks like they want to advise beyond that. And so that becomes a, a serious concern for our country. The labor leader says any job losses in the public sector on Grand Bahama could be devastating to an already ailing economy. The unemployment rate in Grand Bahama is already very high. A lot of the people that have jobs here are government workers and those who work in some of the industrial sector, because tourism is almost at a standstill. Well, if there's any significant cut in, in workers here from the public sector, you, you, you're going to negatively impact and affect an already um, draining economy because those people now won't be able to shop, uh, won't be able to, to participate in the economy and they'll become a burden on somebody else. He believes a massive cut in the civil service would have far-reaching effects. If you have a woman that sells lunch to, to, to government employees, government employees lo um, lose their job, there's less people for her to sell lunch to. If she have two or three people helping her as workers, when her income drops, then she has to fire one of those workers, maybe two, to keep some sort of a profit margin. And so you, you, you get an expansion of the, the unemployment base on um, a, 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 a decrease. And so I'm very concerned. LaRota says what the country needs is economic growth and expansion in the private sector. I would think that um, the government would be advised to probably exploit more of our natural resources here and then to see if we could attract some direct foreign investment to try to expand the, the economy. I know that you want to take the burden of, of the, the government in terms of its expenditure, and, and the way to do that is to grow the economy through private sector in, in investment, attracting some, um, probably some foreign capital in um, to, to do some development here, whether it's resorts, factories, and so forth. Sabrina Brown, ZNS Network News. Meantime, the Ministry of Youth, Sport and Culture looking at innovative ways to promote small business development here on Grand Bahama. Italia Hall has more. Minister of Youth, Sports and Culture Michael Pintard says his heart goes out to residents in Grand Bahama who have been suffering for a number of years. He says because of this, the government is committed to working to create more economic opportunities on the island so that residents can benefit. Uh, one of the things that we are doing as we speak, is arranging for a series of uh, business plan development workshops to be staged throughout uh, Grand Bahama in order to provide grants and financial assistance to budding entrepreneurs, particularly uh, young Bahamians with ideas in the tourism sector and the technology sector. Uh, these are areas that will have a direct impact on kind of product we offer in tourism, which will benefit vendors, which will benefit taxi drivers, which will benefit the, bay, the various uh, eateries around town. He says in the next three months, residents will begin to see the start of many small businesses. The government will be a part of uh, assisting entrepreneurs in having access to more than 350 
thousand dollars in grant assistance. The minister says he fully understands the challenges residents are facing, and more attention will be given to culture as well. The second major initiative which we uh, have indicated that we intend to launch and the construction will begin over the course of the next four months is transforming a number of the uh, Jaukudu Group's facilities into uh, business centers. And so we intend to work with several of the, the groups in Grand Bahama in order to assist them so that they can become self-sustaining uh, in terms of providing uh, a logo store for their products, a creation space, and a performance space. Now a meeting is set to take place on Friday at 7 p.m. between small business owners and government officials in the office of the Prime Minister on the ground floor. Minister Pintard says he will be in attendance. We intend to meet with small business persons to answer concerns they have, but more importantly to lay out the plan of action for the revitalization of the uh, Grand Bahama community as it relates to small business development. Reporting for ZNS Network News, I'm Natalia Hall. Switching gears now, the Ministry of Foreign Affairs announcing the appointment of new Bahamian envoys to the USA and the United Kingdom. Former FNM Chairman Sidney S. Colley has been appointed Ambassador of the Bahamas to the United States of America and as permanent representative to the Organization of American States. Former Commissioner of Police Ellison E. Greenslade is now the Commissioner, High Commissioner rather, of the Bahamas to the United Kingdom of Great Britain and Northern Ireland and and as permanent representative to the International Maritime Organization. Former MP for North Eleuthera, Theo J.P. Neely, is the new Consulate General in Washington, D.C. Astra and Brista Roll will head the Consulate General in Atlanta, Georgia. Linda Trico. Mackey will head the Consulate General in Miami, Florida, and former MP for Long Island, Lawrence Larry Cartwright, will head the Consulate General in New York. Switching gears now, the search continues for a Texas couple fared missing here in the Bahamas. Forrest and Donna Sanko arrived in Grand Bahama on September 25th on board a blue and white Cessna 150 registration number N3214X to clear customs. The couple reportedly spent the night in Freeport before flying to North Eleuthera, with Rumkey being the next stop. Now, we spoke with the couple's niece, Teresa Simmons, from Texas today, who said they haven't been seen or heard from since he was due back at work um at fort at fort worth texas on october 3rd um we know that they never made it to their destination and they never made it back to work and so they're they're somewhere in between um north eleuthera and rumkey um so we have um we've hired private planes to search the area, take aerial photos um, to try to, to find them, um, either the plane or, or find them. Um, we hope that they um, landed, you know, because the weather was bad. We hope that they, you know, landed in a remote area. We know that they had uh, food and water um, with them, so hopefully... You know, we're holding out hope that that's what happened. Um. Now, Simmons says the family's last contact with the couple was on September 26. Reports say the couple officially closed their flight plan at 4.58 p.m. on September 26, signaling to air traffic controllers that he was nearing his destination, but they never arrived in Rumkey. She says the family is baffled by their disappearance and is appealing for help from the Bahamian people. We're asking for assistance from all of um, the locals, you know, to to just look around or ask anybody that may have seen something that day, you know. We're asking for any help from any of the locals to just look around their area um, because, you know, like I said, we know that they didn't just disappear. Um, you know, we've contacted all of the, um, like, the mail carriers that go by and, um, I've contacted like all the newspapers to get the word out. Um, hopefully, hopefully we can get the word out and everybody will just glance around as they're on their way, you know. Hopefully somebody will see something and help us with our search, you know, because 
um, we're doing what we can from here. Um, but it's just, you know, it's just heartbreaking that we don't know and we have to have answers, you know. Our family has to have answers for for closure. Or we have to know if, if they're out there, we have to find them. Say with us, the Bahamas Tonight, the Northern Edition continues in just a moment.